In this video, I'm going to talk about principles of high quality assessment. This is under the topic of assessment in learning. The first principle is clarity of learning targets. Assessment should be clearly stated and specified and centered on what is truly important. Teaching emphasis should parallel testing emphasis. That means assessment should be focusing more on what is the most important skill. Also, whatever you have emphasized in your teaching, it should be the one emphasized in your assessment. There are different learning targets that you want to emphasize on, your, on a specific topic for your students. It can be knowledge which is the student's mastery of the content, or reasoning, which is student's ability to use their knowledge, skills, which is student's ability to demonstrate what they have learned, products, student's ability to create, or effects, which is student's emotional attainments. The second principle is appropriateness of assessment methods. Assessment should utilize assessment methods suitable for a particular learning target. If the learning target is to cultivate cognitive domain, the activities must be for cognate level. In other words, you are going to identify first the learning target and then determine the best assessment method that fits to this learning target. Let me show you some assessment methods and its um, applicable learning target. For objective supply, it's knowledge. For objective select, it's knowledge. Essay for reasoning, performance-based can be skills or products. Oral question, it can be knowledge or reasoning. Observation, it can be knowledge or skills and self-report, it is effects. The third principle is balance. Assessment methods should be able to assess all domains of learning, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor, and the hierarchy of objectives. So let me show you the Bloom's taxonomy. So the knowledge, comprehension, application are the lower order thinking skill and the analysis, synthesis, evaluation are the higher order thinking skill. But it is now revised into this where remembering, understanding, applying are the lower order thinking skill and analyzing, evaluating, creating is the higher order thinking skill. And so the third principle is saying that you have to balance the items for each of this hierarchy. Of course, the higher order thinking skills will take more time in the test, and so it's expected that it will have lesser number of items. The fourth principle is validity. Assessment should accurately measure what is intended to measure. There are several types of validity that are to be established. These are content validity, face validity, concurrent validity, predictive validity, discriminant validity, and construct validity. The fifth principle is reliability. Assessment should show consistent and stable results. Reliability can be measured using retest method, split half, equivalence test, test of stability, Kerder Richardson, either KR20 or KR21, and Cronbox Alpha. And among of this reliability tests, we usually use Cronbox Alpha since it is applicable to different kinds of assessment. 
The sixth principle is fairness. Assessment should give equal opportunities for every student. There should be no discrimination of any kind, racial, age, gender, etc. The seventh principle is communication. Assessment targets and standards should be communicated to students through direct interaction or regular ongoing feedback on their progress. The eighth principle is positive consequences. Assessment should have a positive effect. It should motivate students to learn and do more and should give way to improve the teacher's instruction. The ninth principle is authenticity. Assessment should touch real life situations and should emphasize practicability. The tenth principle is practicality and efficiency. Assessment should save time, money, etc. In other words, it should be resourceful. The eleventh principle is assessment is a continuous process. Assessment is an integral part of the teacher learning process. It should be dynamic, continuous, and efficient. It seeks the innovative capabilities of students and student progress in learning. In other words, if learning is continuous, so was the assessment. This is because learning is always integrated with assessment. The last principle is ethics. Assessment should not be used to derogate the students. One example of this is the right to confidentiality. Never showed assessment result to anybody except for the owner. Thanks for watching and I hope you have learned something from this lesson.